Walau diugut dan didesak untuk meletak jawatan sebagai Perdana Menteri dan yang terkini kononnya harus letak jawatan kerana perlantikan ataupun pengampunan yang di Pertan Agung tidak sah dikatakan oleh pembangkang sebegitu rupa tapi hakikatnya sahabat semua itu hanyalah uh, strategi dan juga perkara yang dilakukan oleh pihak pembangkang untuk menjatuhkan Perdana Menteri kita tugas sebagai Perdana Menteri tetap diteruskan tahniah kita ucapkan kepada Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim ya hadir dalam satu program peluncuran ASEAN AI Malaysia Summit 2025. Jadi saya ingin membawakan anda sahabat semua untuk bersama-sama dengan saya untuk menonton bersama ucapan Perdana Menteri kita Datu Sri Anwar Ibrahim. Tanpa buang masa ayo kita tonton bersama video ini. Hari ini um, ternyata uh, usaha kita ke dalam kerangka ekonomi madani melaksanakan transformasi digital dan dengan pembentukan Kementerian Digital berhasil memberikan pengarahan hal tujuan jelas bagi negara jika negara ini Malaysia bersama rakan-rakan ASEAN mau diangkat sebagai kekuatan baru Malaysia dan rakyatnya teknokratnya Pakar teknologinya mesti mampu dan berupaya meneroka alam, disiplin dan pemikiran baru. So, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this inaugural ASEAN AI Malaysia Summit 2025. Indeed, a historic gathering that speaks not only to the promise of technology but the power of unity and purpose in Southeast Asia. Of course, we are proud to host this. But let me digress a little. Two days back, I was in Kelantan. And uh, I decided to focus this activity to the religious institutions, traditional religious institutions. Of course, I commend them initially for becoming the bastion in the battle against colonialism in all its form because colonization is, does not affect only the political system, the entire value system in the country. The incessant propaganda through the mind and the hearts has led to the complete submission to the colonial powers. Now that's a past, that phase has passed. So I told these religious scholars, this generation, and I believe the future generation, we remain eternally grateful for you, because you stood firm to defend the faith and moral values. You stood firm in rejecting the imposition by a foreign alien system. But then, here's the catch. Let's see what about now. The present challenges, the contemporary challenges, demand that we make the adjustments. I told them, all these gurus and religious scholars. I'm not here to change or dictate the curriculum. But I'm here to appeal to you while retaining this faith and moral values, of course based on Islamic traditional texts, we are now confronting a different form of challenge. That, if you do not address, will cause a divide between those who acquire knowledge and those who remain completely ignorant of the new disciplines and would be rendered completely incapable of mounting this effective challenge to uplift the standards 
of living our people and be deemed to be relevant. You see, that is the challenge. Why I'm sharing this story is when we talk about connectivity, digital divide, this is the stark reality you are facing. How do we then win the hearts and minds of all segments of our people? Those of us who have been fortunate to be able to be exposed to these new disciplines and technology, and those of us and our family members in the rural heartland was completely cut off, would, uh, of course, read into the, what we term as digital divide or other than digital divide, of course, then the, the gross disparity, not only between the rich and poorer countries, the industrialized and emerging economies, but within countries and societies. And I was pleased, extremely excited in that visit, because the traditional religious scholars who probably for the first time had to listen to um, this elementary uh, view about uh, uh, narrative about AI and digitalization were somewhat very accommodative, very supportive. And they said, yes, as long as you don't um, disrupt our, our, our tradition, our education, our faith and moral values, I said, precisely, it's not disrupting, it's defending, because otherwise, you will be just submissive, submitting to, to the forces that is beyond your control. So this is the challenge, Minister Gobin. That's why he's placed there. And you see him, the way he articulates uh, convincingly with full of passion. Now, my, say, my friend, that's the real challenge. Now, which means that our deliberations in this conference, of course we see it at a defining crossroads, of course. Because our choices, I mean, I see our choices, which means precisely the choice of our people, the urban and the rural and the rural heartland, the rich and the poor, the urban um, poor and the marginalized groups. We have to ensure that our choices will shape not only our economic future, but also our cultural identity, public trust, and moral leadership for generations to come. So I'm, of course, doubly pleased to hear the pronouncements. And Atul Gobin, this is more practical to get the industries, the experts themselves to come and say, and this is what we are doing or we intend to do, other than, for example, ministers giving these pronouncements, because people tend to be a bit cynical unless you show seriousness and affect the change. Now, for ASEAN, this is a generational opportunity. Almost 700 million citizens, a rapidly growing digital economy, and an extraordinary diversity of cultures, languages. Our region is uniquely placed to shape AI in ways that are inclusive, ethical, and true to our shared values. If we approach this moment with foresight and courage, AI can bridge development divides, empower small businesses, uplift rural communities, strengthen public services, and expand access to healthcare, education, and more pronounced justice for all. Now, we have therefore to be very bold and principled. Our vision is not only to harness AI, just to catch up with the rest of the world, but to lead in some areas, to protect our values, to give meaning to the principle of equity and justice. So in doing so, 
Inshallah, good willing, God willing, we will ensure that the true measure of AI success is not just the sophistication of its technology. My word, coming from my generation, is really complex and sophisticated. And, and uh, worse, having this digital ministry coming out with all these ridiculous terms sounds Greek to me and forcing me to understand and grasp uh, such an ordeal. So I'm not sure whether I regret it or not having this digital ministry. <laughs> but clearly, as you have seen, we have made a very bold decision and I'm proud to say that we are ahead and forging ahead with such confidence in terms of digitalization and AI and we want to share this and work together with our neighbors in Southeast Asia in the ASEAN Community Framework. <clears throat> Minister Gobin alluded to the launch of the 13th Malaysia Plan our bold blueprint for the next five years. Again, let me reiterate. At the heart is one conviction. Digital transformation must drive sustainable and inclusive growth. Now, at, that, at the center of this transformation is our ambition to be an AI nation. And not as a tool for a few, but a force for all, powering better governance, which is a major challenge in most economies, not only emerging economies, even the so-called developed world. Better governance, sparking innovation, and improving lives. Through, through our AI nation framework, it will ensure that AI works for every Malaysian in every corner of the country. That is why I began by making reference to this very traditional religious institution, which is not small. We have hundreds and thousands of students choosing or opting for that. And we leave them, then the divide will become real and a challenging the challenges for the country would be serious and it is therefore pertinent that the elites, the technocrats have to grasp with this and start dealing with this as a priority. Now, back to our framework, which stands on five strong pillars forward-looking policies, agile and digitally fluent workforce, secure and reliable digital infrastructure, advancements of digital trust, and strategic investments that grew a thriving AI ecosystem through public-private partnerships and global collaboration. These are pillars of the modern economy, of course making AI advanced, inclusive, trusted, and built for purpose. Which means, again, again, the digital ministry must be able to coordinate well with all the forces. Because, um, and this is where, again, the whole approach to governance have to, make, have to adjust according to the dictates of the time. is no longer working in silo or minist traditional ministerial function, but to work as a team, collaborate to ensure that we succeed. Now, highways and ports must be powered. Intelligent highways now, replacing just highways. And secure data pipelines. And... Uh, Future-ready talents, which is another challenge, precisely why the Minister of Higher Education is here. Otherwise, there's no great leap from adoption to nationhood. 
Now, as uh, we gather today with unity, resolve, and unshakable will, I believe that the ASEAN community will continue to pursue this agenda. I am very fortunate because I have a formidable team, not only in Malaysia, but forged such strong bonds of friendship with ASEAN leaders. Secretary General Kao would testify to that. That makes it easy to prove a basic point that would determine our own survival, that ASEAN must remain the most peaceful region in the world and must remain to be attractive and vibrant economy to ensure this meaningful digital transformation. So, terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you.